Hello dear friends, today we will tell you about the Adrian helmet. You will get acquainted with the history of its creation and its effectiveness. Moreover, you will learn what was the purpose of the fin on the top of the helmet. In World War I, the French army, like all other conflicting parties, entered the war not quite ready for the new realities of combat operations. With the ever-increasing efficiency of artillery fire, even trenches could not save soldiers from sharpnel. Especially considering the fact that the standard headgear of the French infantry was pretty but useless caps. On one occasion, while walking around the wounded, the French quartermaster general Louis Adrian got into a conversation with one of the soldiers, who had survived a shrapnel hit to his head. He was not just lucky. This soldier confessed that as soon as he heard the artillery fire, he put a metal camping ball under his cap. That's what ensured the saving ricochet. Well, this is the popular version of this story. After studying the statistics of wounds, Louis Adrian discovered that in 1914 of all the wounds received by soldiers on the battlefield, 77% were shrapnel head wounds. But what's even worse, 80% of them ended up being fatal. Fighting an incredibly high percentage of head wounds in the overall statistics, General Louis Adrian designed a small metal helmet that looked more like a soup plate. Joseph Jeffer, commander of the northern group of armies, was initially not very happy about Adrian's new design, and saw no need to order new helmets for the army. Partly because there was a strong belief among the commanders that the war would be over by Christmas. But thanks to Adrian's stubbornness and persistence, Joffer changed his mind. And on his recommendation, the war ministry ordered a batch of 700,000 of these helmets. Designed to be worn under a hat, it was very uncomfortable to use, and was most often worn either over a cap or simply on top of the head. In the army, the helmet was jokingly nicknamed the soup bowl, both for its shape and most likely because it was most often used not for its intended purpose. It was often used as a kitchen utensil. And yet, even such primitive protection made it possible to reduce the percentage of head wounds almost by half. Based on this experience, Joffer ordered an improved and more practical version of the helmet to be developed for the army. The result of Louis Adrian's hard work was the helmet adopted by France in April 1915, which was called Adrian Helmet. It was the first modern army helmet in the world. It consisted of only four parts. A spherical helmet, front and back visors, and a fin that covered the ventilation hole and provided additional protection from shrapnel falling from above. It served precisely this purpose and was not just a decorative element. But it is worth noting that it gave the helmet a resemblance to the headdress of the Napoleonic Wars era. This too was very important for the fighting spirit of the French army. The helmet that weighed about 700 grams was easy enough to produce and although not without some difficulties was immediately put into mass production. The equipping of French troops with the new helmet was done at the fastest pace possible. By the end of 1915, more than 3 million helmets had been produced and delivered to the troops. The Adrian helmet could not withstand a direct hit from the bullet, but contrary to what some people thought, it was not designed to that purpose. Its main purpose was to protect the head from sharpnel, and the helmet was doing it well. The introduction of the helmet ended up reducing the overall head casualty rate by more than three times compared to the early period of the war, which was an incredible result. Recognizing the benefits of the Adrian helmet, other armies around the world followed suit. And some armies started buying helmets from France. Others began their own production. And that is how the famous and easily recognizable British and German helmets were born. World War I is often called the first war of economics, so the simplicity of the Adrian helmet design was no less important than its protective qualities. The cost of producing one helmet ended up being even less than cost of producing a cap. I mean the cap that was used by French army before. By the end of the war, about 7 million helmets had been made for the needs of the French army alone. And the total output including the Allies' needs was about 20 million. Adrian helmet was adopted and used by the armies of numerous countries both during and after the war. In France, the Adrian helmet after some modifications was used in the army during the interwar period, as well as during World War II, and even for some time after its end. And French police used the Adrian helmet until the 70s of the last century. World War I was the most brutal and bloody war in human history by that time. 
8.5 million soldiers were killed in action, and more than 21 million were wounded. Terrible numbers, but it is even more terrifying to imagine what might have happened if the invention of General Louis Adrian has not been born. Following the example of France, the military helmet eventually became a mandatory part of the equipment of soldiers in all armies of the world, and remains so to this day. As for Louis Adrian, you will now find his name in history books among the famous generals of World War I. There are no pictures of battle scenes and passionate quotes about the war on his tomb. There's only the helmet, thanks to which millions of soldiers saved their lives. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, then support it with your like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you later. Bye, everyone.